Let's talk about conditionals. We're going to use implies and implication and if thens to work out some truths and falsehoods. Um, the symbol is just an arrow. Some people do draw this arrow with a single line, but technically it should be a double line. I'm pretty sure a textbook does the right thing. Yes, it does. A double line arrow means implies. You will sometimes see it in other places with just a single line. Um, N is a model of 10, implies N is even. It could be said many ways. If N is a model of 10, then N is even. Or N is even if it's a multiple of 10. You will even hear words like N being a multiple of 10 is sufficient to say that N is even. So you might go, n is an integer and n ends in 0 implies n is even. I'll turn it into maths. What about n greater than 3 is a sufficient condition? I'll get this right. Sufficient condition to conclude that n is positive. Oh, a sufficient condition. What does sufficient condition mean? It means if I've got this first bit, then I must also have the second bit. So we're going to write n greater than 3 implies n is greater than 0. Okay, the textbook wrote n is positive at the end, but same thing. And sometimes you might even see it as a necessary condition. And I've worded this exactly as they do. N greater than 3 is necessary. Okay. N greater than 3 is necessary if N is greater than 4. How do I want to write that as an implication? The other way around. Yeah, because n greater than 3 must follow if n is greater than 4. So that means n greater than 4 implies n is greater than 3, and that makes sense. So the way we use necessary and sufficient in English leads to an opposite implication. And then we're going to have some fun. Um, they do it in that order, okay. A few things we can do with implications. The converse. 
Actually, let me, let me, before I write that heading, oh, I suppose I've got room, haven't I? Suppose A, oh, I'm usually just P's and Q's, why not? P implies Q. Then the converse says, i make sure I get them the right way round, Q implies P. Just because P implies Q is true doesn't mean the converse is true. It's just another sentence you can write. So for example, if n is a multiple of 10 implies that n is even, that's true. But the converse would be, if n is even, then it must be a multiple of 10. And that's false. They aren't necessarily the same. There is the contrapositive and there's a negation. The contrapositive, if P implies Q, make sure I get this right, says, oh, do you want this in words or with symbols? Not Q implies not P. And then there's the negation, which is a bit hard. I'm going to leave some space and come back to that. So let's give you an example from what we have over here. If n is a multiple of 10, n is a multiple of 10 implies n is even, then the converse says n is even implies n is multiple of 10. So we said the first one is true, this one, the converse is false. They are not equivalent all the time. But the contrapositive Am I going too fast? Okay. The contrapositive says n is not even, odd, means n is not a multiple of 10. Is the contrapositive true or false in this case? True. It turns out the original and the contrapositive are always equivalent. That's handy because sometimes it's easier to prove the contrapositive than to prove the original statement. And they're equivalent. If you can prove one, the other is true. You can disprove one, the other is not true. Let's test that on another example. Let's try this one at the bottom. Oh, it doesn't really matter, does it? Let's do it anyway. Oh, should I make you up a different one? What did we have? Some of the other ones we had yesterday. They might be better. Oh, they've got some good ones here. Um, N is a perfect square implies 
n is divisible by 3. Is that statement true or false? False. False. I can think of many perfect squares. In fact, every perfect square except 9. Every perfect square except 9 is not divisible by 3. So this statement is false. What's the converse? Converse says just turn it around. n is divisible by 3 implies n is a perfect, whoops, perfect square. True or false? false. Also false. There's plenty of numbers divisible by three that are not perfect squares. What about the contrapositive? Not this implies not that. N is not divisible by 3 implies N is not a, a perfect square. It's a bit harder to get my head around. Is it true or false? False. Cause? Well, just because it's not divisible by three doesn't mean it's not a perfect square. Well. Sure. Can we just argue that because the original is? Yes, you can go either way, right? But you can, for example, show this is false, come up with a number that's not divisible by three that is a perfect square. No, actually. You want this to be, yeah, this to be false. Yes, correct. So let's prove it. So how do I actually, what is this actually telling me? If P, how do I, how do I explain this to you? How do I do this to you? Because I want to lead you to the negation. The negation is hard. you have a go. N is multiple 10 implies N is even. What's the negation of this statement? What's a way of saying the opposite of this, the negation of that? N is multiple 10 implies N is even. Could you just swap one of them to be the opposite? Like if N is a multiple of 10, then N is odd. Say that again. Like swap one of them. Yeah. The what was your example? N is a multiple of 10 implies N is odd. Yes. Correct. You're going to try to find a value here that makes this true, but this false, because then that would negate this statement. So like not P implies Q, or P implies not Q. Close, yes. You want to go, what are they saying? You want, you want to say there is some variable such that uh, P is true and Q is false. Does it have to be in that order? You can say this in many different ways. Okay. But you have to find some way that, to make P true but Q false. So in this case, yes, we're going to go it, find some number n that's a multiple. There is a multiple of 10 that is not even. The negation would be, oh, I didn't leave enough room, did I? The negation would be there is some n where n is a multiple 
of 10, but n is odd. And that one is false, whereas the original was true. When the original is true, the negation is false. When the original is false, the negation is true. Can we try this one? The negation means I want to try to find a number that's a perfect square that is not divisible by 3. There is some n such that n is a perfect square but, or n, same thing in this case, and n is not divisible by 3. Negating an implication is harder. And we said this one was false because this is true. I can easily find you a perfect square that's not divisible by 3. 25 is a perfect square, but it's not divisible by 3. Called logical equivalence, the logical, all of this is really the language of logic. Trues and falses and implies, this is all the language of logic. Um, uh, P is equivalent to Q means P implies Q and Q implies P. Or if you prefer, or P and Q are both true or both false. Or lots of other ways of doing it. We will often use the word if and only if, which we also have an abbreviation for. Let me give you different ways of writing something. Let's go. Uh. So x equals 5 is equivalent to 2x equals 10. You could write this in different ways. You could say x equals 5 if and only if 2x equals 10. Or you could say x equals 5 is a necessary and and sufficient condition for, did I say four or to say, what did they say? Four, there you go, 2x equals 10. Or you might say x equals 5 implies 2x equals 10 and 2x equals 10 implies x equals 5. Lots of different ways of saying the same thing. And we care about equivalence because it's going to enable us to do proofs using the contrapositive. It's going to enable us to do negations to, to prove things. Proof by contradiction is a negation. So any of these things should tell you, oh, it's a equivalence. The two statements should be the same. 